Welcome to the Axiom. New file detected. Launching file. How's it going, everybody? My name is Leo, and today we are continuing the Disco Elysium file. Where we last left off, we had uh, gone to... We'd put the point in half light and we managed to succeed against the racist lorry driver to get him to tell us where the lady driver's lorry was we then found evidence that not only was i right is in that she is the eighth hardy the eighth hardy but she is also the one who is smuggling drugs we reported back to joyce and we also confronted titus titus told us that basically uh they are the drug trade Hi hypothetically of course and uh then joyce told us that basically i was right about a third party working to get the uh to keep the strike going because it turns out the mercenary who got hanged he had two comrades with him and now they are trying to figure out who did it in order to exact revenge on them which if they do could cause a massive civil war in Revishol that could lead to plenty of casualties. So what we are doing now is we are... Do I have any checks that are open right now that I can... Wait, this is open? And wait, this is open? Okay, no, that's not open. Um... That was just highlighted because I clicked on it. But Tommy Lahome, that is all of a sudden open now. So I might actually check that again really quick. And then conceptualization. These are all. Do I have to uh... logic formidable? That's not open yet. Okay. So what I'm going to do. I guess first now is I'm going to talk to Tommy and I'm going to see about that empathy check and then uh, I can I'm going to go I'm gonna put a point into perception and then go back down to the iceberg fridge and see if I can make any progress when it comes to that let's go ahead and do this make way for the master poet oh empathy didn't force him to out lady driver okay so let me do I have anything in my immediate inventory that helps me with, with empathy? I actually don't think I do. Uh, do I have anything that minuses empathy right now? I don't. Fair Make enough. Okay. Poet. Let's go ahead and try it again just because. In his eyes, oh. an off-familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. Familiar? How? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. What's in the southwest? Excuse me? He emerges from the reverie. Um, oh, I actually thought I was asking that in my head. I didn't know that I was asking him directly. Motorics. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Hmm. Let's go with this one. Hell, I get longing. I've felt something similar since I woke up. Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know. So he's missing someone as well? I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. Can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. Jeez. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. 
I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. Yeah, I know that, like, typical truck drivers, they have to spend a long time away from their families because oftentimes their deliveries can take them to, like, other states hundreds of miles away. So, yeah, I wonder if this is, like, a similar situation. Except for, on a whole, basically, it sounds like on a whole nother continent. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Psyche check. I want, am I missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? Um, hmm. I miss my gun. Um, I miss someone, but I don't know who it is. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. Yeah. But thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone, and I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. That was nice. I like Tommy. I'm glad I got to. I'm glad I got to get that out of him. Um, but okay, we are going to go down and check this body. And maybe see if we can get something. Because, like, so, above all, well, not above all, but, like, very primarily, um, I love playing the role of a detective. I love being able to, like, find clues and get important details. And so, like, even in D&D &D and stuff like that, perception is one of my favorite checks. Um, because it, like, I think it's really cool to, uh, red. it's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. I forgot to actually put the point in, <laughs> but I, uh, I love seeing things, um, that are hidden and drawing conclusions and stuff like that. So, um, even though it's not perception is not my focus i'm actually a little bit surprised i would think when like when i first started the game i would think something like perception would be in up here but i guess you don't if you can't see it then you can't draw conclusions from it so i guess it makes sense so i'm going to put one point in perception and accept changes and close and then i am going to Yep, that is now open. Thank you for letting me know. Do I have clothes that help me with perception? Or that minus perception at all? Reaction speed, savoir faire. Um, I don't think I've come across anything that helps me with perception in terms of clothing either. So what is the set now? Still it's 28%. Red. It's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. It would be really funny if this was just a massive troll. Like, once I succeed at this check, I'll find out there's nothing missing. But, um... I mean, let's try it. Damn. You touched a dead man's body. His skin is cold, light blue and... It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. Let's go ahead and close the door. I don't know if I want to put my second point in perception. That seems like a bit much. Let me go ahead and... What do I want to do? Um... I could talk to Everard get his task because he did say Kim did also say that he wished I had gotten more out of Everart so maybe that is something I can do let me re really quick just to make sure I'm not imagining things let me go back to Selang and check his clothes like check the glasses and make sure I'm not missing any perception helping ones the shine on the Stylish shades, huh? 
they'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. Okay, so yeah, these minus perception. So I'm gonna leave for now. And then the shoes are still super expensive, right? The speakers, you should go over and ask him about paying for yeah. those sneakers with your net worth. Still haven't gotten that uh, quest yet, so I'm gonna wait until I get that before I pay for anything there. But, um... Let me really quick go ahead and pay Gart for the night, because it is getting close to 2100. Um... Can I help you? About my bill Stop for tonight? 20 real. Yep, 20 real for the night. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Okay, goodbye. Um, so let me now go and um, what are my tasks at the moment? Also, how close am I to leveling up again? Not at all. Um, Smoke on the balcony, replace lost pool. I'm honestly thinking that... Ask another about the tattoo's possible meaning. Who would I ask? I doubt Placence would know. Um... I doubt Kuno would know. Uh, I'm not going to ask the, uh, dudes, the soldiers, because that's a super bad idea. Um, I could, oh, let me take out, get rid of this flashlight. <laughs> um... The best course of action might be to talk to Everard. See if I can get any more out of him. Because, like, it's 2100, not le I mean, 2100 is when I can talk to the people. So it's not like they are... Wait a minute. Is something new going on right now? No, okay. That's that looks the same. For a second I thought there was someone like tied up right there. <laughs> um So let's go ahead and Oh, actually I could ask Cindy about her home. I forgot about that. Um But I guess let's go back and talk to Everard. Is there anything else I can do here? Like, what is... Is there anything new I can do with this, this phone? The payphone hangs me. No, okay. Let's go ahead and go this way. All right, let's go ahead and see if L Easy Leo has anything new to say. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. Leo, Leo, in the future, can we keep this greeting shorter? Sure, mister, absolutely. I'm always willing to help out nice fellows such as yourself. <laughs> um, okay, no new dialogue. I mean, I guess let's talk to Everard. I'm not exactly happy with the prospect of talking to Everard again, but we need to get his info out of him. So, I mean... Am I wearing good things for this? I feel like I am. This one encyclopedia. Hmm. 
I think I, I think I'm okay. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time. You've already <laughs> sat on that chair. Um. So I did. Hmm. I wonder what would happen if I confronted him about this. Um. I could also tell him about this. Interesting. Um, I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take <laughs> slander. Are you actually investigating this? Intellect? Your reaction appears to be sincere, but... It's impossible to tell with this guy. Huh. I could lie to him. Hmm. Or I could... No comment. Harry, you wound me, Harry. In the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? <laughs> Until He's then. hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. I wonder what his real reaction is. Is he angry or scared? Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. <laughs> you too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. Huh? I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. Okay. Not taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Um, hmm. I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation hmm. situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? Yes. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Ace. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. I'm not a jealous guy. Mm -hmm. Psyche. Whoa. That's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Um. Are you sure? I find a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. <laughs> what happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Gaumont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You called him a midget. Harry, I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. <laughs> um, why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Psyche check. He doesn't want to see her. It's mm. as simple as that. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. <laughs> oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Intellect. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Funny, Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew. Or a <laughs> hairdryer. Or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in its expression or demeanor now. Hmm. 
Let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, hmm. but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. <laughs> it is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. Weird. Okay. Um, I'm curious about if this really is the only way to get him to tell me about the hanging or if there's another way. Because I do remember the authority or something saying that I could pretend to help him and then he would play into my hands. But let's... So actually, let's see. I'm reconsidering opening that door you asked me to open. Perhaps it will help me somehow. A fantastic change of heart, Harry. Go talk to Manyana down by the gate. He'll brief you and give you the key. Just open one little door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. That's it. Anything hmm. else we should discuss? Um... What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly mm -hmm. remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the convulsant crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. <laughs> smooth-talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Huh? What? <laughs> um... So... I'm thinking... I'm going to leave now, we'll talk about it later. Just kidding, but not too much. So... We have this task now. The question is, I don't know if I want to tell him about the alcoholic brew. I don't know if I want to... Everett asked you to open the basement door... Hold on. Everett asked you to open the basement door behind the greenhouse in the backyard to intimidate the occupant. Do what you have to do. Everett has promised to give you info on the case in return. Can I check the door? Really quick? The problem with all of this is I don't know, like, the stuff about the drug trade and the stuff about the alcohol and the borscht are all aces up my sleeve, but I don't necessarily know how to use them yet. So I can try to convince this container to open? You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Huh. Uh, hang on. Do I have any rhetoric clothes? Or anything that reduces rhetoric? This is, this is weird. <laughs> um... Minus one rhetoric. I mean, you know what? Sure. Why not? You're back before the cargo container. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Yeah, why am I? Why are you what? Never mind. Are you satisfied, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me go ahead and, but anyway, what was I saying? Um, I feel like, let me, let me go ahead and check this door. 
And then let me get the, the key from Menyana. And then... I wonder what Kim thinks about all of this. Because I don't know... If I should actually be doing this. I wonder if there's a better way. That could involve, like, blackmailing him. Because if I tell him that... I am um, that he put alcohol on the borscht and I'm investigating the drug for oh wait no I want to check the door first I'm doing the right thing um, if I tell him that I am doing the that I investigated the drug trade and I know that he's putting alcohol on the borscht and I stopped it maybe it will make him scared enough to tell me but I don't know if that's oh wait no, this is not the correct way. I don't know if that'll actually go anywhere. I, um, chances are he'll still want me to do his thing. So... I'm very curious to get Kim's thoughts on this. Um, but at the same time, this is what I have to work with, so... The good thing is that the day is almost over, and once the day is over, this will be open. Oh, it's this door. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. This is, um... Did it even let me s select this door before? Or did it just give, like, the locked door sound? That's probably the door I've had mentioned. We still need to get the key from this manana first, though. Okay, so Kim seems to be okay with it. So, I mean, let's go ahead and get the key i guess but yeah i wonder like it did say again like i can pretend i'm helping him and then i can like swoop in and deceive him and he'll actually be under my thumb but i don't know how to go about doing that <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk to manana can I help you? Everett said you have a key to a door. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Um... He said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Hmm... Uh, I'm not really doing this for political reasons. I'm just here to solve the case, man. Oh, so the none of the above type, are you? I get it. I get it. I like to keep my distance, too. Achievement unlocked. It it's a good thing you're doing. Thanks. The world's most laughable centrist? What does that mean? <laughs> what you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. All right. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task? This weasel person, when he'll be home? I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. <laughs> I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. The man takes a big si sip from his flask. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everard. Psyche check. Who he is 
and what they're fighting for? Hmm. This is interesting. Actually, do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. <laughs> Psyche. Is he actually comparing you, an officer of the law, to some neighborhood vigilantes? Come on. He's just trying to keep the peace. Hmm. Let it go. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. Um. How large a share would you like? All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board so they could take part in the decision making process. Instant? This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page, communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them <laughs> to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. <laughs> the boss man, Everard, what can you tell me about him? We're just not going to go down that road. Uh... I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does bossing the union entail anyway? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? Yep. By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? <laughs> we live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world... Corruption's the only thing that'll get you far... The old man is corrupt for our benefit. Okay. We know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. The desk seemed lavish to me. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his bit up to. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. <laughs> that would be a manipulative illusion. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway. And moralism is the most corrupt of them all. <laughs> so not you, you would like to say. But then, there's that weasel door. Yep. This man has political theory, and it has not failed him today. Got the picture. Let me ask you something sure else. Thing. Psyche check? What is this? News of the world. Talk about personal stuff. <laughs> Get to know him. Wait, I don't even know your name. Who are you? Call me Manana. I'm just a humble harbor worker for the past six, seven years. Intellect? Manana sounds like a mesk word. But he doesn't actually look much like a mesk. Well, I know, I know mañana is Spanish for tomorrow. Not a given name for certain. It's a taken name. The kind for artists or criminals or revolutionaries and the sort. An alias. A nom de guerre. <laughs> um, well met, mañana. That's a sweet ass name. A name worthy of the man who holds it, friend. Names are important. Hold on. Have you had any other names? Plenty to go around. Don't get greedy and try to swipe mine, though. Mm -hmm. You got your own. So it's a nom de guerre? A nom de guerre would be more like guerra mañana. <laughs> then he then realizes something. Now that we are getting so well acquainted, what's your name? Psyche check. Be honest with him. Hmm. Um. Be honest with him? Honestly, I lost it while drinking. Wow, this is major. You're like... A man born anew. Okay, so if you can't find it, maybe make up a new one? I may take that into consideration. Can't live in this world without names, see? Important things they are. Vessels of the soul. What's your deal with names anyhow? Is it a spiritual thing or a philosophical one or... More a poetic thing. Any attempt to formulate a grand unified theory about it ends in the stupidest shit imaginable. <laughs> Doesn't make it less true, though. He nods sagely. That means I can't tell you about it. I can only show you. You may understand in time. Or not. But it might be easy enough. Hmm. Interesting. Fair enough. Seems interesting. Words guide our life. We commune with each thing through its word. Every word is also a name, is it not? Okay. I think it might be Harry. Harry. It's cool. But I'm sure you could come up with something even cooler. <laughs> 
Interesting. All right. Okay, I have a name for myself. It's something gold in a wildfire. That's... Huh. But I already said my name is Harry, so that blocked that out. Is this a white check? You know what? Sure, why not? Your mind can only conjure up hunk handy. Fuck evil days. <laughs> Bosco. You might want to decide to keep quiet about these. Yeah... Uh, I can't do it, it I'm sorry. Time to come up with a good one, for sure. Good talking to you, I gotta run. Fair enough. So, map... This is now open? Why is that now open all of a sudden? Interesting, I mean, I'm headed that way anyway, so, uh... Let's go ahead and do that, I guess. Um... So yeah, I guess Kim is okay with us doing this? I don't know... I mean... I would like to involve... To avoid being corrupt, but I guess... We have to... Break the rules a little bit if we want to actually get this case solved. So let me, I guess... <laughs> if I fail this check again, Kim's going to... <laughs> Talk about how I keep stopping Just at this wall. Ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Oh, in the dimming light, some things become clearer. Let me actually hang on. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Clothes. I have something for conceptualization, don't I? Yes. Just an ordinary wall. Twenty-eight percent. Yeah, why? Why yeah. must we stop to look at this wall every time? <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and re uh, change that back out. Let me actually really quick, quick talk to Cindy. I don't remember if I had talked to her after I got the thing. So let me go ahead and I actually want to talk to her face to face, not just from the balcony, from the bottom. And then I'll talk, to, and then I'll go to the door and see what's up with that. I wonder if this maid has anything new to say as well. So let me go ahead and talk to Cindy. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Is that bed in the coal room yours? Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. Um... Really? You're a miner? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. It's not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Do you have a real home? Does anyone in a city like this? I guess. Shoot, piggy. It's what you do, isn't it? Uh, no. I don't have a gun. <laughs> um, this is not the correct door. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so that uh, the maid didn't have anything new to say, so let's go ahead and do this, I guess. This must be it. The basement door is weather worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Press your ear against the door. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. I take it this is a perception check? In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. Huh. No birds chirp. Um... I guess carefully knock? You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. <laughs> the lieutenant looks uncomfortable. Lieutenant, what is your opinion of this task we're undertaking? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. 
the lieutenant replies, still inspecting the padded door. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? If the Merc Tribunal happens before we solve this, we are looking at casualties. What's one unlocked door compared to that? I guess that's true. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrard we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Lie to Evrard? That's also an option? Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. Mm. You make the call. Perception? The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. So I guess. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. Hmm. Interesting. You have the key. The door is behind the greenhouse in the yard, a basement door. Or you can lie to Everart that you open the weasel's door. I mean, I'm not opposed to lying. I have drama stuff. I also could put that point in drama if I wanted to help my case more. I could. Plus one logic, minus one authority. Yeah, I mean, I could. Put that point in drama and then just lie to him because I don't and I'm glad it's giving me the option here but we are if I fail that could have pretty bad ramifications but then again I don't think Kim actually wants to open this door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... First off, I'm going to take a look at those glasses again and see if there's any worth buying because I can never remember what they actually are. And then... I guess we'll go and lie to Everard. But for that, my drama needs to be high. And... I can put the point in drama if I want to make it higher, and I do like the drama stat, so I guess that would make it plus. If I succeed at this task, this actually would... Actually, I don't know if it would give me enough points to level up and do another perception check, but still. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at these glasses, see if there's any worth putting on Shine. again. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go uh, and ask him. So minus one perception, plus one inland empire. I don't know if I'll be... And what are the ones I have on right now? Plus one visual calculus, minus one drama. I don't think I'll need visual calculus for that. It, it would benefit me a lot more to put on the uh shine stylish shades huh to put on the other thing even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth go over and ask him and eh, i don't think these are worth buying right now even like i don't think i'll have any use for inland empire during that conversation wait what is this now is this something i saw because i put that point into perception Scribbled between the thighs of a three page of a page three girl. The orange do something. Um interesting. Okay, so I can see the things now. But let's go ahead and let's change our clothes now. Do I have anything that affects drama here? No. I want to keep my authority. So let's go ahead and take these off. I'll put those on later. I'll, th I'll put those back on later, but I definitely won't be needing visual calculus for a check like this. So, and then what would that put my thing at? 
six. Not terrible, but I don't know how the high the check is going to be. And something tells me this is going to be a red check. But... I mean, this is what... I wanted to do. Pretend to help him, and then... Have him help me in the long run. I genuinely don't know how this is this could go super poorly. I'm glad I have a spare point. Just in case. Um But yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. Hmm. I wonder if it would help me if I s did either of these. I don't know. Hmm. Because I can see it going both ways. If I do tell him, he could think that I'm honest and that when I say I open the door, I am being honest about that. However, on the flip side, if I tell him about those things, he could think that I'm an honest cop and that there's no way I would open the door. So that I so I could see it going either way. I could see it both helping me and hindering me. I think I mean let let's go down this road. I opened the door to your weasel's den. Are you shitting me, Harry? Did you not really open the door and are now just telling me you did? You're a wild one, Harry. Took the key from Minyana. 83%. And it is a red check, just as I thought. And... I think... Do I actually want to do this? I think... Yes, I do. This is the road that I've decided to go down. And also, like I said, drama is a skill I like. I wouldn't mind leveling it up. But if I fail this check, it's going to be dangerous. Um, and I'm only doing this because it's a, I knew it was going to be a red check. So let's go ahead and accept changes and close. It's now at a 92%. Good. Now take it a bit further. Take it home. <laughs> okay. And not, not only did I open it, I went inside too. It was a real weasel's den ever our I bet it was, Harry. But seriously, what did you see in his apartment? A guy who has antagonized the Union in a Union-run town. Maybe it's political. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Shake your head. Fascist insignia everywhere. Memorabilia calling for the return to the Golden Age. That's exactly what I thought, Harry. What a weasel. And for the record, I was only curious, <laughs> not testing you. He was testing you. You succeeded. Thank you, Harry. You have shown me that the Bardeur's Union and the Citizens' Militia can indeed work together. Now, let's cut down to brass tacks. Interesting. So it was a... fascist dude? But then again, I'm... I've proven that I'm not corrupt, so... It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. I've heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. 
By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. I'm listening. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. This is kind of true. You mean our victim? A security contractor? Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire? That... Compared with what Joyce said is an exaggeration. He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senarisa Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Wait, they move the con- No, nah, um... Let's not derail this. Go on. About my fun container. It's a hoot, Harry. Who knows? Maybe you'll be in here the next time they move it. It will be very fun. I promise. <laughs> but enough about me and my container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them. All hardened commando types. Yeah, that's true. One of them got downright suicidal. Getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. Mm -hmm. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. Who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. The Hardy Boys. That sounds a bit like organized crime. Yep. They're like you guys. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again. That sounds like organized crime. <laughs> so these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. Okay. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? I think he knows we can't. Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. <laughs> if he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. Yeah. He places a lot of faith in that lawyer girl. Perhaps this is a tactical error. Anyway. <laughs> you mentioned a lawyer girl? Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. 
and I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? That is true, actually. We found out. You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Hmm. Another question. Absolutely, Harry. Absolutely. Tell me, it to me. tell me about Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men. All seven of them. <laughs> Exemplary union members. Always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. And the eighth? Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Everard, I met these Hardys. Can you ask them to cooperate with me? But of course. It's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. So you can now go and tell Titus about this. <laughs> See what he has to say. Okay. Also, Harry, here's five real. Um, wait, why are you giving it to me? I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. <laughs> Needless to say, this is another move. Don't take it. I don't need it. I only wanted you to help me with the Hardy Boys. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you, just holding it out there. But I'm willing to share information. Was there anything else? Good talk. Let's conclude for now. Was it a good talk? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yet? Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. Mm -hmm. A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. Welp, uh, too late for that. <laughs> He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. Um. Interesting. Should I just tell him the truth? Or should I lie? Or is this, I feel like, I can't tell if this is I'm trying to convince him or if this is just a pol another opportunity for me to say where my politics are so that they can give me, so that the, the game can give me a political option for my thought cabinet. Um, I'll go ahead and do this. This is another corrupt scheme, isn't it? I'm neither left nor right. I do what my heart tells me to do. What does your heart tell you about your lost gun, Harry? Does it tell you to forget about it? Or do you think it wants to be found? I think it's lonely and cold. I think it wants to be found, and I have a proposal for you. Mm-hmm. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. What are the signatures for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth center in Martinez. It will be righteous. We're going to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. Uh... I... That went so well the first time. Because didn't the dice maker tell us something? Wait a minute. That's it. No, could the dice maker be the second soldier? Because it did say that it would have to be a building that was high up. 
And wasn't she monitoring the radio? Like, she said she was listening to music, but she could have been monitoring the radio for, like... Is that it? I just had that realization. Is is the dice maker the second soldier? The uh, Phyllis DePaula? But um, back to this. The She told us about the uh, um, old attempt to build a youth center. I think it was a youth center, or maybe it was the gym. It didn't go well. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. Where is this place exactly? On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. What will happen to the current occupants? They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Mm -hmm. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Are you 100% sure no one's going to end up homeless? Am I? Harry, these people, Martin A's is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. Mm -hmm. We're going to build a youth center there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people, not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martin A's, not just the harbor. Mm. He means it. He means it? Kim, what do you think of this? It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. <laughs> he studies ever. But he thinks it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking... Well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin A's and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. Intellect? He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting things. Huh. I mean... I don't have to... I can accept the task and then just not do it. Um, I mean, he mean he, he means it. He's not going to. I mean, for all I know, though, it could just be. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Claire was very useful. I agree. I think he was extremely vague and everything he told us was stuff we already knew. And I can always, you know what, I'll do it. Because if most people have already signed, then if I'm supposed to intimidate these people into signing, then I don't think I'll do it. But I'll at the very least accept the task. I'll see what this is about. I do, and again, I could just lie like I did before, maybe? Although lying would probably involve forging the signatures and then they would go and do it and they would get in trouble for it. I don't know. Let's go ahead and accept the task. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. He hands you an open white envelope. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I hear there is some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix it by Wednesday morning. Once you have the signatures, Mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then we can talk about your gun. Can we go over a few details concerning the murder again? Most certainly, Harry. Nothing brightens my day like brainstorming these things with you. Okay, I thought there By might be... By means, Harry. What's on your mind? I've heard I'm going to leave now, but we might talk later. Okay. Actually, I don't want to... I don't want to interact with it in front of Everett. So I'm wondering if... So let's see... 
A white envelope with a stamp attached to the upper right corner, handed to you by Everett Clare. Inside are some legal documents with two names printed on them. Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Both signatures are required. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Look at the zoning plan. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. Jeez, so like, dealing with construction noise, this noise is literally going to be happening in all of their front yards. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth center. Psyche. This is either an ominous or cool architectural choice. Mm -hmm. Hard to say. My money is on cool. Looks like a cubic pyrite. Oh, Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... Excellent. How else are you going to build something? It's always inconvenient to build things. And citizens inevitably have disagreements over such construction projects. But there's no other way. Hmm. Logic. Centers very close to houses. Ominous shape. Cool cubic pyrite. Because, of course. So... Do I want to make that check? I mean, I guess I could still... It won't lock me out of just asking them for the signatures, but... Sure, let's try to find a loophole. There is no loophole. The simple truth is, the current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. Mm -hmm. Wait, what are, the, what are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. Mm -hmm. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Look, Kim, these people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about it? I should have seen it. The lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. Everard probably has eyes on us, but we could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge their signatures oh, yourself. Boy. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. However, we'll need access to the coast before we do anything. Everard won't believe you got villager signatures if you can't even get to the village. You can try a forgery as soon as we can cross the water lock. Put the documents back in the envelope. Okay, so there, well, yeah, there was a loophole. It's that, um, yeah, they'll sell their property for cheap anyway. No one's, quote, no one's going to end up homeless because they're all just going to get rid of their homes and move elsewhere. So that's the, yeah. Get two signatures for Everard. Forge the, forge the signatures, but somewhere private where you feel safe enough to sleep. Okay, so maybe I can find somewhere in the water lock um, to stay that doesn't involve me spending 20 real. And then I have a point that I will spend next time. And uh, that's where we're going to go ahead and end it for today. Uh, another very interesting episode and uh, another successful one, I think. In, one, in the span of one day, we managed to fully, not I guess fully, but we managed to interview both Joyce and Everard. Uh, Joyce was pretty candid, and then Everard, well, that happened last episode, I guess. But Everard was, uh, we managed to get everything of Everard that we could at this juncture, and we didn't even have to actually open the door. We managed to succeed at the check. So, um, next time, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to maybe try to kill time until 2100 and then talk to the smoker. And uh, beyond that, we will uh, presumably have another dream and then move on to the next day. And we'll the rest of Revishol will have opened up to us. So we'll be able to see what all of that entails. So, uh, I'm, I don't know for sure if that's going to happen next time, but, uh, look forward to it. I know I am. So thank you everybody so much for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it.
If you want to be notified of when I upload the next part of the file to the archives, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell, as well as leave a like or comment if you so desire. Thanks again, and I will see you next time. Upload successful. Click here to view previous files. Have a pleasant day.